Alrighty, everybody. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, and welcome. It is Saturday, May 25th, 2019. I'm Darkseid Phil, and I welcome you to today's gameplay stream. How are you? Hopefully, I find you well. Hopefully, you're having a good weekend. Um, and you're excited for a full day of streaming and something new and different we're doing today. Uh, I have to give an incredibly big shout out to the viewer and fan who contributed today to allow this to happen. I don't know if they actually wanted me to give their name or not. Therefore, I'm not going to to respect any kind of privacy that maybe they were trying to, to keep. I don't know. Um, but thanks to, excuse me, I knew I had a burp stuck in me. Excuse me. Thanks to the contributions of a viewer. Today, we are going to be checking out the Neo 2 Alpha Demo. Pretty cool. It seems that it was completely random who got this. Um, a lot of people saying they didn't even ask for it and just got it in their emails. While others were like, man, I'm the biggest fan of Neo and I didn't get it. So I don't know if they were looking up people who had bought Neo 1 and, you know, sent them the codes. Or if they were just sending out a random mailing list or whatever. I have no idea how they determined who was going to get access to this, uh, this early alpha. Okay. So, um, pretty cool. Neo 2. Hope you guys are excited for some gameplay today. Some difficult gameplay today. As you know, Neo is the competitor, the direct competitor to From Software's game franchises. They were really the only game to really majorly kind of be around the same level, I would say, um, as the From Software franchises. Now, you know, since Neo has released, we've also had this year Sekiro. So we did have another From Software game as well that was pretty difficult, although that one was based mostly on parrying, while Neo is more about weapon usage, stances, counterattacking, and many other things. So all that being said, uh, I'm excited for Neo. Um, two, Neo 2, excuse me. And we got a little bit of information about it last year, E3. But that was it. Really, nothing else had been released. And then all of a sudden, boom, they released this alpha demo. So we're going to give it a shot today. It's going to be at least four hours of gameplay here. Now, if this is anything like the Neo 1 alpha demo, that was incredibly long. And if I remember correctly, it featured two entire stages um, of the game that took quite a long time to complete. So, if this is the same, that probably means that we're talking at least 8 hours of gameplay. Keep in mind also that this game is incredibly tough, much like Dark Souls. So, you know, there's going to be a lot of deaths and whatever. Um, you know, we'll see. We'll see how long it takes. You know, I basically the way I, I'm, I'm treating it is this. I've opened up my weekend. If there's enough content in this alpha demo to support multiple streams, great. Then that's exactly what we'll do. If not... Then what I'd like to do at some point, like let's say for example we're playing it and we finish early, I would like to switch over to Days Gone and play for another hour or two in Days Gone just to see the the post game content I didn't get yet because apparently there's at least a few more post game missions that need to unlock in Days Gone uh, in order for me to see kind of all of the epilogue story. So I definitely would like to do that at some point. Okay. Also in the coming days. You're going to see more Team Sonic Racing, the conclusion of the campaign, plus the first online play of Team Sonic Racing. All right. I am planning on going back to Mortal Kombat 11 at some point and trying out a new character and doing all the stuff that I was doing in Mortal Kombat 11 with a new character, including training mode um, and their character tutorials, going through their arcade ladder to see their ending, and then playing online. Okay. So that's going to be coming up. And, depending on how things go in the next few days, um, if I can raise enough funds and if things financially are stable enough for me, I'm planning on trying out a Plague Tale. Um, I want to, but the thing is, right now, like everything I'm raising on stream is going straight to, to, to bills, so it's been pretty tough, not gonna lie. Um, we'll see how things go in the next few days with contributions and everything. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> so, let's see how it goes, alright? So, yeah, so here's the deal. Let me go through the schedule for the next few days so you guys know what to expect. Right now, this stream will be Neo 2. If there's enough content in this alpha demo to support the entire stream, great. 
If there's not, then we'll, at one point we'll switch over to Days Gone. Okay? Tonight, MLB The Show 19. It's going to be a chill late night stream where we just relax and interact. There's way less about the gameplay and way more just about um, the interaction. <clears throat> so, um, that should be fun. Okay? Tomorrow, I'm not sure. It depends on how much content there is in this Neo 2 Alpha Beta. Alpha Beta? Alpha Demo. Um, if... Neo 2 has more content, then we'll play that tomorrow. If not, then tomorrow I'll be returning to Team Sonic Racing to finish up the story-based campaign and then do my first online competitive play of the game. All right. It may be my final uh, stream of Team Sonic Racing, depending on how it goes, because really that's all the content of the game is the story mode, um, offline, you know, local multiplayer, which obviously I'm not going to do, and then online multiplayer. So we'll see how it goes, okay? Um... Tomorrow night, Sunday night, it's the return of Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations. Another two hours of Case 3 of that game. So I hope that you'll be back for that tomorrow night. That should be fun. Okay. Um, and then, oh, my neck. Oh, you heard that? My neck just cracked bad, man. And then on Monday, again, it depends on how things went this weekend. But more than likely, um, probably going to do a session of either Mortal Kombat 11, and trying out a new character, or a Plague Tale, all right? And we'll see how, again, we'll see how that goes um, and go from there, okay? Uh, Monday night, probably going to be returning to Minecraft for my chill stream. Tuesday, again, we'll see how the week goes. Tuesday night, probably going to be doing Black Ops 4 Blackout. And Wednesday is my final streaming day of this week before my day off on Thursday, okay? So don't worry. There's going to be good variety this week between this Neo 2 Alpha between the more Team Sonic Racing, some Mortal Kombat, and possibly a Plague Tale, depending on how things go. Um, when I come back on Friday, it's the final day of May, and I'm going to be doing Ask the King. This is my bi-monthly Q&A show, all right? Now, I take questions from various places, all right? The best place that you should post up right now if you want a chance to get your question answered on Friday's Q&A show is my forums at thekingofhate.com. Please head over there. Please register and post up. There's already a thread for Ask the King this Friday. Please. The more questions I get, the better the show is. Okay? And as I said the last time I did this two months ago, I'm almost wondering, is, is Ask the King something that maybe it's getting old and it's time to retire it? All right? And the reason that I say that is because every day is kind of like Ask the King. You know, we have a pre-stream where I talk with you guys and answer your questions. We have interactive streams where I talk with you guys and answer your questions. You know, Ask the King had a place, you know, years ago when I was a, only a YouTuber. I didn't do interactive streams. And so it was your place to ask me questions and get them answered. Now every single stream is an interactive stream. So we'll see. Let's see how this episode of Ask the King goes. All right. Let's see how it goes this Friday. Um, you know, again, please post up your questions on the forums. And if it ends up being a good episode, great. Then I'll just keep doing the show. But if it ends up being stale, if the questions kind of stink you know, it's not a very entertaining experience, then maybe we'll, it'll be time to, to hang it up, as they say, you know? So I guess we'll see. We shall see this coming Friday. All right. Fair enough. Okay. All right, guys. So let's continue, shall we? Um, so that's the rough schedule for the week. I hope that sounds good to all of you. I have a positive update regarding yesterday's stupid content ID debacle on YouTube. Good morning, Denmark has released their claims on my Team Sonic Racing videos. Wow, what a surprise. So you mean to tell me that Good Morning Denmark, the morning show in Denmark, didn't actually hold the copyright rights to Team Sonic Racing? <coughs> I mean... I never would have known. Who would have known that that was an illegitimate copyright claim by YouTube's shitty, broken, piece of garbage, <coughs> automated, algorithm-based, copyright, copyright matching system that, as I said yesterday on pre-stream, probably about 90% of the time, the things that get matched are erroneous. Good luck in a court of law proving that a system that is erroneous 90% of the time actually is abiding by copyright law. Because it's not. If anything, 
It's doing the va- the direct opposite. It's assigning profit rights illegally to the wrong people. And the only reason that it doesn't improve is because no one sued YouTube about it. So anyway, um, the good news is my Team Sonic Racing playthrough now is back to normal. So anyone who wants to watch it on YouTube, part one is unblocked. And you can actually see it again. Um... Sucks that I had to have 24 hours of the video blocked because YouTube system is a piece of donkey shit. But, the whole website's a piece of donkey shit. So I'm not surprised that a piece of it is not working properly. Um, it is what it is, right? So, that's why I don't focus on YouTube content. That's why I don't make original content for YouTube anymore. And I probably never will. There's no point. The website is run by a bunch of idiots. And it doesn't work properly. So, I'm just not going to worry about making original content for a site that doesn't support me. Okay. <clears throat> okay. So anyway, just getting it out of the way. I mean, the good news is, yes, the claims were cleared up. That's great. So anyone who didn't see Team Sonic Racing yet and wanted to watch that playthrough on YouTube, it's now available again for you to watch. The block has been removed. Okay. Okay. <clears throat> All right. All right, moving on. Um, I'm just trying to think. The only other thing I want to mention is that I am going to be doing my retrospective special marathon event the first week of June, all right? And I haven't set the date yet, but I'm going to soon, okay? I need to think about it. What day would bring in the most viewers? More than likely, if I think about it, probably in the weekend. So maybe like next weekend, um, you know, might be a great time to do it. Because either Saturday or Sunday will probably bring in the most viewers. You know, now that I'm thinking about it because it's a weekend. Um, and there's no reason, you know, there's not like there's anything else going on where I couldn't do it on the weekend. So I probably will. So either June 1st or 2nd. Um, tonight, ladies and gentlemen, tonight I am going to put up uh, a thread on my forums on thekingofhate.com by which you could submit your favorite moments for my 11 years as a content creator, and, you know, this will be a good opportunity for you to nominate things you want to see in the marathon, because remember, the way this marathon works, it's a retrospective event where together we watch back my old stuff, whether it's game playthroughs, whether it's game reviews, whether it's vlogs, just me talking to the camera, you know, at home, or whether it was travel vlogs, it's ongoing series like DSP Tries It or Cooking with the King, uh, you know, many, many things over the years. That we can definitely go back and watch together. Um, and, you know, looking forward to that because I've done this three times before. And every time it's been very successful and people have had a ball. So, please, as of tonight, I will post up on Twitter when it's available. The thread will go live. You will be able... Um, <clears throat> you will be able to nominate and then, uh, you know... Hopefully get get whatever you would like to see in the, in this marathon coming up. So please post up once it's available. Okay? Alrighty, sound good? Um, Last thing, guys. So apparently, and I hate to say this, there's been a way that has been discovered to abuse Twitch's subscription system. And this was came to light last night on my Rage 2 conclusion stream. Now just... <coughs> excuse me. <clears throat> stupid post nasal drip. <clears throat> so just listen to how stupid this sounds. All right, we we discovered this last night. So apparently, Twitch instituted a new system recently where if you have a new account on Twitch and you subscribe to a channel, you can get it refunded. Now I don't think that this is something you can do over and over and over. I'm assuming you know Twitch will gonna is gonna have a limit here where they're not gonna let you sub to a hundred channels and then get all your money back. You know what I mean? But it seems like they have this new system where you can sub- you can you know subscribe and then immediately get your money back for it. Okay? As if, "Oh, I misclicked. I didn't mean to subscribe to that person or something," which is re- ludicrous because when you click um when you actually click on, you know, a sub or whatever, um it actually asks you, "Are you sure? Are you sure that you wanted to sub to this person?" Yes or no? And you can say yes or no. So why the hell would it have a refund feature? It doesn't make any fucking sense at all, right? It just doesn't. It's pretty stupid. Um, so last night, I was here streaming Rage 2, 
and we had a bunch of people coming in with I- insulting names, basically. Um, you know, insulting me, insulting my wife and stuff. And just basically kept subbing. Sub, 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 sub. So all of a sudden, all these sub notifications started coming in for insulting names. But then immediately, the subs would be removed. So the sub would come in, oh, I get credit for it, and then it would be removed, and it would go away. And I was like, well, that's bullshit. <laughs> right? So how does that make any sense? How do you how do you create a system by which you now have someone who can, you know, do something completely insulting live on a stream, get away with it, and you know, and then pull back and you don't get any credit for it. You know, previously, who cares if someone does it if you're getting money for it? It's like they're paying to insult you. Now they've created a system by which people can just fucking do this willy nilly, um, and basically get away with it and have no repercussions whatsoever. Okay, now apparently, as stupid as this sounds, on Reddit, a Twitch mod or someone said, oh, well, what you should do is notify us of repeat offenders and we'll IP ban them. That doesn't work at all. I had to tell you, um, IP banning is such a rare thing on Twitch. They'll usually only do it for someone who, like, makes a million dummy accounts. Um... And it's a process by which you have to, you know, just think about this. Yeah, I really want my moderators to submit a list of, like, 100 fake subs that came in today and somehow submit this to Twitch staff so they'll review it and IP ban someone who's a potential abuser. It's dumb as shit. It's just, in my opinion, this is one of the dumbest things Twitch has ever done. All right? This is, like, 100% only going to be used to abuse trolling. It's not going to be used legitimately by anyone. Who the fuck comes on Twitch and accidentally subs to someone? It doesn't exist. But you will have people coming to abuse this shit to get messages on people's streams. I mean, how many people now, big streamers, are going to have a thousand fake subs in a stream and then they're all fake, right? All right, so here's the deal. Um, I have had to adjust the stream. There's nothing I can do about it. You know, after last night's Rage 2 conclusion stream, which was a, a mess, I mean, for a straight hour, we had people have throwing up insulting messages on the stream because of my notifications for people who subscribe okay so here's what we're gonna do i've turned off the subscription notifications all right and here's the way i have it set up now i don't know if this works if you resubscribe to the channel so if you're already an existing subscriber and you resubscribe to the channel you should get an on-screen thank you notification just like you used to so for those who already were supporting me and then they decide to extend the sub you're going to get an on-screen thank you pop-up, okay? If you are a first-time subscriber, you will not receive an on-screen thank you pop-up. Instead, I'm going to give you a verbal shout-out. The thing is, this will allow me to screen subs. So if we get 100 subs in today, and out of them 80 are fake insulting shit, I can just say, okay, I'm not going to give a verbal shout-out to those people when I read their names. You know, I'll read it like, oh, okay, yeah, Phil's a fat fuck. Just subscribed. Of course, I'm not going to read this. I know that's not a legit one. That's one that's going to be refunded, right? So, <clears throat> that's how we're going to do it. If you subscribe to the channel for the very first time, I will give you a shout out here on the stream. So, you're still going to get recognition for your con- contribution. All right. You're still contributing to the subs total. That's going to be updated. Um, but there will not be an on screen thank you pop up. You will only get that thank you pop up for resubs. So, if you subscribe and then you resubscribe two months or, or onward, then you will get. The continuing thank you pop-up, all right? But either way, you're going to get a verbal shout-out. And this allows me... um, This will allow me to control the trolls, okay? This, sorry that I had to do this. Obviously, I didn't want to do this. This is something that Twitch did on their end that screwed everything up. I don't know what the hell they were thinking. And obviously, they didn't ask anybody. They just rolled this out really stupidly um, without actually understanding the repercussions of what it was going to do. So, rather than... Me having streams completely derailed by assholes. I'm not allowed... I I mean, I'm not willing to do that. I want our our streams to continue to be fun and positive. Um, We're just going to do it this way. Fair enough? It's that simple. Okay? So, there you go, guys. Um, That's that. And this thing, like, this is good now because, sadly... Last night, I hate to say it, but the conclusion of Rage 2 ended up being completely derailed by these assholes. You know, uh, instead of me being able to kind of focus on the game, 
I got distracted by all these fake subs, and it made me... Basically, it made me miss a critical line of dialogue that let me know I needed to tank in order to get into the final stage of the game. I had to retrace my steps. I wasted, like, 5-10 minutes uh, on this stupid shit. And it was very annoying. You know, it is. We're, we're trying to have fun and just focus on a game and have have an interactive stream, and instead we gotta deal with, with dickheads. Because Twitch allowed them to have a way, new way to troll. It's just so fucking stupid, so... Um, that's how we're taking control of the situation. All right, so there shouldn't be any problems now. Now we've we've nipped the problems in the butt. Oh, uh, and the resub people will still get their pop ups, and the new subs I will give a shout out for. And so everyone, it's a win win, and the trolls will not be able to abuse the system. All right, we shut that shit down within twenty four hours. I figured it out, and now we're good to go. Okay. All right, there you go, there you go, my friends. <clears throat> All right, um. I think that is it. I think that is it um, for all the things I wanted to cover before we get to the plugs. So now we get to the plugs. Okay. All right, guys. Thank you very much for over 11 years of support. Um, you know, as a content creator, I've enjoyed sharing what I love as, as my passion, as a hobby, as and doing as my job since 2011. There's been highs and lows for sure. Um... You know, and since 2017, I've had to adapt my business model from being a full-time YouTuber onto, into being a full-time streamer and taking my focus completely away from YouTube. And quite frankly, um, I've had a lot of fun doing it. I actually feel now that, that what I do on a daily basis, my streams and my content is better now than it's been in the past because of the interactivity and the fun that we have on each stream. So thank you for that. However, one of the major changes that was instituted was that now... I am mostly dependent on your crowdfunding contributions to keep things going. It's not like it used to be where I used to make a ton of ad revenue on on uh, YouTube and it would pay the bills. In fact, I, you know, at this point, it's probably about one-fifth of what I was making on YouTube at this point. No lie. Um, and there's no way I could even pay, you know, a third of my bills with what I make on YouTube anymore. Um, it's that crazy. So... Please, if you enjoy these daily live streams, if you enjoy the on-demand videos on YouTube that are archiving these live streams every day over on DSP Gaming, and you want to see this continue, okay, please consider contributing in one of the methods I'm about to mention. And uh, one thing I will say up front, contributions are greatly appreciated and, you know, they are needed to keep things going. However, they are not a requirement for watching the content. I am happy for every single person that comes by just to hang out with me on stream, but, you know, it goes hand in hand. The contributions keep the streams going, okay? <clears throat> so, first of all, please check out my Patreon at patreon.com forward slash darksidephil, all right? This is uh, the monthly campaign that I run, and there is six days left? Yes, yeah, six days left this month. If you want to get in on this month's perks, this month's... uh you know, reward system for pledging, all right? Thanks to anyone who already is a pledgee, and if you want the full details, please head to, uh, to the website, patreon.com forward slash darksidephil. It'll explain everything about the perk levels and that and the like. Uh, thanks for considering pledging to my Patreon. I also have a Teespring, where I sell all kinds of fun merchandise, primarily t-shirts, but there's many other things there, sweatshirts, mugs, etc. Uh, great quality stuff, I can attest to, because I have owned it. <coughs> oh my God, excuse me. <clears throat> I have owned some of this uh, merchandise for over two years. And it hasn't worn out. It hasn't faded. It's great stuff. All right. So if you buy something from my Teespring, it obviously helps me out. And you get a cool collectible. Please give it a look. That's teespring.com forward slash stores forward slash DSP Gaming. All right. Now, if you're here live on the stream, it's a no-brainer. You'll probably want to contribute live on the stream to get some kind of interactivity and get a shout-out for your positive contributions, right? So if you either cheer with bits or you subscribe to the channel or you tip me during today's stream, you'll get a live verbal shout out um, as a thank you for your contributions. If you look above the stream, we have a stream stats leaderboard that tracks things like total subs, top tip or top cheerer, right? And that will be periodically updated when we do have a new top cheerer or top tipper, all right? Um, another way for you to get extra recognition. In addition, at the top of the stream chat, if you are watching on the desktop version of Twitch, is the integrated streams? Uh, excuse me, integrated cheering leaderboard. This keeps track of the top cheerers of the week. All right. So, 
yet another way to get extra recognition, right? Um, so many ways to contribute, many ways to get recognized, and for me to say thank you. Now, understand that when I'm doing the thank you shout-outs, that this is my own stream, and it's very subjective what I say and do on my own stream. First of all, I have to abide by Twitch's terms of service. In addition, I try to maintain a certain vibe on the stream. I try to keep it chill and fun and interactive and positive, which means no drama, no politics, no religion, no insults, no bringing in negative memes towards myself or even other streamers. Sometimes people try to come in here and derail with ne saying negative things about other streamers, and I don't allow that either. In general, this wants to be a cool place where you can just chill and hang out and have some fun and you know, see my honest reactions to games and, and, you know, interact with me a little bit and just have a good time. That's the whole point. So we're going to maintain that vibe and understand that I am going to do my best <clears throat> to maintain said vibe. And so I am not obligated whatsoever to read or say anything on my own streams. Understand that because some people seem to have a misconception. Well, I cheered. It says something incredibly insulting. Phil didn't read it, so he broke his contract. What the hell are you talking about? <laughs> There's no contract. There's nothing here. I don't have to say anything on my streams. But I am appreciative of your contributions, which is why I give shout-outs for the positive ones. Okay? Fair enough? All right. Now, ladies and gentlemen, real talk. Right now, I'm in one of the worst financial positions of my entire life. Things are incredibly bad right now to the point where I'm barely making ends meet and paying all my bills. This has nothing to do with you. All right? And, I, you know, the only reason I bring this up is because right now, if you really want to help me, the best way to help is by tipping me. Because when you tip me, I get those funds right away. And all the tips you guys have been contributing for the past several weeks have gone straight to paying my bills. And trust me, it has helped me immensely. You are helping me through this tough time. So thanks to anyone who contributes via tipping. Seriously, you guys have been absolutely amazing. Um, please consider tipping me if you want to help me out the most right now. All right. There's two ways you can tip below the stream. There's a tip star button you could click on, or you could type exclamation point tip into the stream chat. Two quick things about tipping that are common misconceptions. The first is you do not need a PayPal account in order to tip me. You don't. You can just use a credit or debit card. All right. Just like as if you were doing anything else on the internet, just using a credit or debit card is possible. That's number one. Um, number two, you don't have to give away your identity or your name if you're afraid of being trolled for contributing positively. You could just go ahead and, and put in an anonymous name, like anonymous, or you could make up a name. You know what I mean? Like, you can put in completely whatever you want, and no one's going to know it's you, including me. I have no idea, you know, who's tipping me. So, please consider tipping. If at all you want to help the most, it would help me out immensely right now, and I appreciate anyone who has tipped and anyone who's considering tipping. Because it really is helping me through a really, really, really tough time in my life right now. And I hope things are going to get better. Seriously. The next couple of months, I seriously hope things can get better. But for now, I just got to tough through this. Okay? Okay. Now. Let's now get to the shout-out segment. Where I give credit for those who have already contributed on the stream. And, um... Let's go ahead and see, because I believe we actually did have a couple overnight contributions today. Yeah, we did. Okay, so we had a couple people who contributed overnight. We start off with Golden Colts, who did a couple cheers. And then we had Tantamounter, who did a 100-bit cheer. So thank you to both Golden Colts and Tantamounter for your overnight support. That is much appreciated. Now let's move on to those who contributed while the stream was live. We start off with Real Talk Mod Me who cheered 50 bits and said, after beating both Rage 2 and Days Gone, do you wish you had paid for Days Gone and then got Rage 2 from a fan since Rage 2 is objectively worse than Days Gone? Um, Here's the thing, though. I don't agree with you there at all, Real Talk Mod. I, mean, I, don't, I don't think it's objectively worse. I think it's a subjective thing, and here's why. If you like action-based, you know, gritty first-person shooter combat, then you probably would think that Rage 2 is a much better game. If you think that story and actual gameplay hours is more important in a game release, then you're probably going to think Days Gone is the better game, okay? In reality, <clears throat> I really enjoyed the story of Days Gone, and I really enjoyed the gameplay, the actual first-person shooter gameplay of Rage 2, but I equally disliked elements of each game. In, in, in Days Gone, I really do feel that the gunplay and... A lot of the grindy style gameplay, such as taking out the Freaker nests 
and or taking out the repetitive base camps over and over is incredibly boring, uninspired, been done to death in other games, and really takes away uh, you know from the game, especially this pr certain parts of the game where you kind of have to grind to progress. Okay. On the flip side, in Rage 2, I think the story is piss poor bare bones, really just rushed. The game feels like it's empty. There's two entire areas of the map that don't have any story elements to them, which makes no sense because they feel completely empty. And it's like, man, it almost feels like they rushed the game and it's not done. Like they had two more pieces of the story to finish. They never finished. They just rushed it out the way it was. So in my opinion, I don't even really think that one game is better than the other. I think each game has its strengths and each game has its weaknesses. So actually, real talk, my, my, my honest answer to you is no. I don't wish that I had paid for Days Gone and got Rage 2 from a fan because I actually think I liked the games about equally. I actually did. I think the one element of one game was great. One element of the other game was great. It's too bad they couldn't combine the two to make an amazing game. Instead, you get two games that are just kind of good, but not great, not amazing, and certainly not blowing you away thinking Game of the Year contender or anything like that. Okay. <clears throat> All right. Hodor Targ has cheered and says, Why do you refuse to adopt new methods of interaction like restreaming E3 and watching it live? Is it you being stuck in the, a stick in the mud? Do you think it would not bring enough viewers? Because I think your audience wants live raw E3 coverage really bad. I have explained this every single year. All right? Every year. And for some reason, people just don't listen to my answer. So I'm going to answer it again. I do not feel that live reactions to a live event or a movie trailer or anything like that adds anything. I think that it's cheap. I think that it's incredibly uninspired. It's easy mode stuff to put out. It's, it's fluff content creation. All right? It is. It's the ultimate fluff. Because... Live reaction to something is basically you overreacting to get a response from your viewership. And it works because people are gullible. People are silly and gullible and they want to see overreactions because they're drama. Drama infused and immature. And that's all it is. It's immaturity that makes that content so enjoyable to a viewer. Alright. <clears throat> the way I do it <clears throat> is I'll watch a press conference. So let's say, for example, this year, the Bethesda press conference. Alright. We'll watch it together. Like, we'll, I'll have it hosted here on my channel on Twitch. We'll watch it together. I'll take notes about everything going on in the Bethesda press conference, and I'll have this kind of soaking in and me formulating opinions on everything that I'm seeing on the live press conference. Then immediately when the press conference ends, I go live on stream. I recap everything we saw in the press conference with my now digested thoughts on what I think about it. When I do my E3 coverage... It takes a little bit longer because it's intelligent. It's me weighing and balancing things in my head. It's me telling you overall what I thought of a presentation. It's me giving you intelligent reactions because it took some time for me to formulate them and actually give you a conscious thought versus, oh, knee-jerking, silly, over-the-top reaction to something, okay? I really do feel, and this is my opinion, you can be completely disagree with me, and that's okay. I want you to understand that. It's okay if you like stuff I don't. But me as a person and a content creator, I feel that these you know, people that just do react videos, elders react, gamers react, this reacts to that, reacts to that, it's fucking fluff garbage. It's the lowest common denominator of content creation. It takes zero fucking effort to make it. It doesn't have any kind of actual intelligence to it. It's a complete waste of everyone's time, and all it is is a cheap laugh here or there. That's all it is. Okay? I don't think there's anything added at all. Nothing. No value added to having the live stream of E3 and me doing a face cam and going, Oh, ah, oh, ah. Because in reality, I don't do that. In reality, here's what you would see. Me just sitting there taking notes as we're watching the press conference. That's it. I'm not going to overreact or whatever. I'm going to be sitting there taking notes and being, you know, my normal self. And then afterwards, you know, you'll hear my reactions. There's no point because I'm not going to sit here and be a fucking Muppet for a camera and completely overreact on purpose to draw an overreaction to try to make money. You know, I've never been like that. You guys know that. I'm a genuine dude. You know, yeah, every once in a while I'll ham it up if we're doing something silly in a game or whatever. But that's not me. I'm not Mr. Ridiculous ham it up overreaction nonsense. All right, so 
It's that simple, okay? It's just that simple. I'm not doing it. There's no point in doing it. It wouldn't be entertaining, and it's what everyone else does because everyone else does lowest common denominator shit with zero effort. I don't do that. Uh, I'm going to be doing it as I usually do. Well, I'll host it here on my channel. We watch it together. We can chat a little bit and, and react and talk about it as it's happening live. I'll be taking notes and digesting it and forming an opinion. And then afterward, I'll immediately go live with my recap and reactions. As always. Okay? All right. So there you go. Yoshino Lover did a 1,300-bit cheer. Thank you very much, Yoshino Lover. Biggest cheer of the day by far. Let's get him up here on the leaderboard. Okay. Yoshino Lover, 1,300-bit cheer, and he says, Man, I am hyped for Neo 2 to come out. Hope you enjoyed the demo. Thank you very much for that. Uh... The very generous contribution. Thank you, thank you. Um, boomer side Phil tipped me a dollar saying, since I'm embracing a means, can I embrace the boomer meme? Well, I'm not a boomer. I understand that. I guess there's a meme that if you're an older gamer, you're considered one of the baby boomers or whatever, and you're outdated, and you complain about things that more younger kids uh, or younger gamers don't complain, wouldn't even bring up. You know what I mean? And I guess some people have made that association with me being I am one of the older content creators on the internet i mean how many people 37 years old do you see doing this full time not a lot uh i get that at the same time I, you know i don't even know what there is to embrace because again i'm not really part of that my parents are baby boomers actually my parents were baby boomers and it's funny because if you actually read political commentary people are like yeah basically baby boomers destroyed the country they kind of did. If you actually look at the things that they did, the cha the choices they made as they were in leadership of our country, they kind of ruined a lot of stuff. But I'm certainly not a political guy, and I'm not going to sit here and talk about that, okay? Um, but yeah, the thing is with this boomer meme, number one, I don't really understand it. And number two, it sounds political to me, even though it might not be. So that's why I really haven't talked about it much. If anyone wanted to explain it more to me or whatever, uh, maybe I would consider, you know, somehow adopting it, but I don't really know much about it. Okay. Frog's playing golf cheered. He said, you see someone made a new emo and posted it on Twitter? Nope, I did not. Uh, Lirius AK resubscribed to the channel for 10 months. Is it testing the new troll prevention feature? I can tell you, Lirius, I was paying attention. And absolutely, 100%, your resub notification did pop up on stream. So these adjustments that we've made so that resubs will show are, are, is working. This is good because this means ongoing supporters will get the pop-up thank you messages and new subs will just get a verbal shout out. It'll still work out and we will completely avoid this new abusive feature of Twitch where people can basically back out of a subscription. Okay. Fair enough. All right. King of Golf HD cheered. He says, I got the gold Neo armor recipe in Neo 1. Can you give me a good shout out and smile? That drop I got is like a 0.02% drop or some shit. Also, sorry for rough mining yesterday. The mass subs annoyed me. I hear ya. They annoyed me too, and I tried to do my best to not let it derail the conclusion of, of Rage 2. There's not much you could do about it, though. A new stupid abusive thing we discovered, right? Uh, King Golf cheered again. He says, I think it's a bit misleading. People take a dump on your from soft footage, but leave out the Neo gameplay. Like, didn't you parry a boss 30 times in a row and didn't take any damage with a spear? That's bragworthy. Yeah, there was one boss that actually was funny because when I got to this boss, um, people were like, oh, Phil's going to get his ass handed to him. And I died like twice trying to learn the boss pattern. And then the third time I walked in there and I literally parried every attack. Every fucking attack. The boss did not touch me once. It was a flawless victory. And that's true. You know, in Neo, did I die a ton? Absolutely, I did. Absolutely. But once I kind of got the hang of the game... I did a lot better, and I would say the end game stuff that I did in Yo was quite entertaining and fun. Um, I really did enjoy it. The DLC, not so much. The DLC, actually, in my opinion, was poorly designed and was rushed out there just to say they had a DLC expansion. It really wasn't very fun nor entertaining. It was just made to design to be fucking annoying. Um, versus the, the actual main campaign of the game, in my opinion, was very, very challenging. But it was fair, and it was fun once you mastered the game. Um, <clears throat> so I actually had a lot of fun with Neo 1, and you're right, I did actually get much, much better at it 
the more I played it. And you're right. It's funny. People won't bring that up. They would never. Who on earth, if, if you're one of these assholes, um, if you're one of these assholes who all they want to do is, is completely write off anything positive I've ever done, the last thing you're going to do is go to the moments where I, I persevered. No one is ever going to highlight my final boss battle in Sekiro. They made, if you can believe it, there's a, this is how you don't play Sekiro video. Even though I beat Sekiro more quickly than about 90% of the people who played it. And I'm not a great gamer, but I adapted to the game enough that the final boss wasn't even hard for me. But they won't highlight that. They can't. They can't give credit for that, right? Because their, their whole narrative is that I'm a terrible gamer, that I'm not good at anything, that I don't deserve any popularity or any kind of attention, and that, you know, everything, life's so unfair that they can't get any attention because they're all better than me, but, you know, I'm a terrible gamer and somehow I still have an 11-year legacy and I'm still going, right? That's their whole narrative, their whole bullshit little sob story, little world's smallest violin narrative. So if they have to keep that going, they have to pretend like I never did well in Street Fighter despite there being tournament results out there showing that I won multiple tournaments, including Evo East and the like. Um, they have to pretend like I was never, ever good at any game I ever played, so hide all that footage, delete that shit from existence, right? You know what I mean? Um, they have to basically try to hide every positive, all right? There is no way... You could make a this is how you don't play video of Sekiro in any kind of a legit fashion without highlighting the fact that I beat the final boss more quickly than most people who played the game. If there's a video out there that exists that says, you know, highlighting my how bad I did in Sekiro and you don't bring up that I actually dominated the end of the game, that's completely disingenuous and you are a worthless shithead. It's that simple. You're just trying to spin a narrative for your own designs and you're not being fair whatsoever. And, you know, you could just go fuck off. But that's it. They won't. They won't do that. Same thing with Neo. When Neo, at first, I was getting my ass handed to me. About halfway through the game, I kind of got it. Started understanding the ins and outs. And I started parrying bosses. And the game got much better. And I got, you know, much easier. And I really enjoyed it. Even though I still died, I enjoyed it a lot. And that, that was it. Oh my god, Phil's enjoying this cripplingly hard, difficult game that a lot of people are having issues with. Well, God forbid. God forbid. <laughs> Anyway, obviously I digress, right? Okay, let's continue. Solomon Pluto has resubscribed for three months and says, let's keep the train running. Thank you, Solomon Pluto, for the three months of support. Timbo Slice cheered and said, why do you feel refunding subs is a bad thing? We're buying a product that most companies allow a refund of the product. Um, wrong. That's actually not true, Timbo. Um, first of all, there are many places that say no refunds. All right, there just, just are. And most companies that allow a refund allow a refund for a legitimate reason. For example, if you go to GameStop and you buy a video game and you bring it back and say this game didn't work or whatever, then they'll give you a refund or store credit if you have a receipt proving you bought it there, right? These people who are doing these refunds are not doing them for legitimate reasons. Not, oh, I bought a sub from the guy and the guy got banned from Twitch, so now I can't make use of my sub. It's, oh, I want to troll this motherfucker, with an insulting name, so I make a dummy account, I, I subscribe, and then I, uh, you know, I refund it. And that's the problem, Timbo. I don't, I'm don't. i not saying, if there's a legitimate reason why someone wants a refund, then that should be granted. But the problem is, you know for a fact this system's going to be automated. It's not going to be reviewed by a human every time it's done. So you know it's going to be primarily used for trolling. So if a system is going to be primarily used for, ne for negative, malicious purposes, that system shouldn't exist. If they want a refund, a formal refund system, it has to be a system that's reviewed by a human so that human can look at it and say, well, this isn't legit. Your name is Phil's Sweaty Donkey Balls and you subscribe to his channel and then immediately, you know, pulled back the sub so you can get your name that says Phil's Sweaty Donkey Balls to appear on his screen. It's obviously trolling. You don't get a refund, right? So there you go. <clears throat> that should be the truth of it, okay? <clears throat> and that's the other thing. There are some people... They'll come in here, and they'll do, they'll subscribe, and then immediately act like assholes. So, Joe Splamoni comes in and subs, and then this first message in the stream chat is, Phil is a fat piece of shit who doesn't deserve any success, and no one give him any support. So then they get banned, appropriately, and then they go whine to Twitch, oh, I, I just subbed and I got banned, I want my money back. No, that person literally came in and trolled on purpose. They don't deserve to get their money back. You know, they, that's it. They made their choice. 
So you see what I'm saying? This is a, a system by which people are going to constantly be abusing it just to get attention, just to troll people. How many people legitimately do you think are going to want a refund? Legitimately. Not that many. How often can you accidentally sub to a channel? Oh, I was on a channel and all of a sudden I had an epileptic seizure and my right hand was clicking nonstop and I double clicked on the sub button and I clicked by accident. Bullshit. You know, that's bullshit. I don't think there's even a legitimate reason to get a fucking refund. Except if said streamer got banned. That would be one thing. Okay, I subscribed to LTG and he got banned for the 700th time from Twitch. So now I can't make use of my, my sub. Okay, yeah, you should probably get a refund then. But outside of that, I don't see a reason why anyone should be getting a refund for a subscription like this. Okay? So there you go. Shout out to Murai Must Die, who did 105-bit cheer and said, Are you excited for Call of Duty Modern Warfare? Well, let me put it this way. Um... <sighs> If it's a throwback to original Modern Warfare gameplay, then the answer is yes. The answer is absolutely yes. If it actually plays like old school Call of Duty, then I'm all for it and I'm excited. But if they're just calling it Modern Warfare 1, you know, and then you play it and it's got double jumping, wall running, quick scoping, auto aim nonsense, you know, all the bullshit that makes Modern Call of Duty terrible. Okay, then, no, I'm not very excited for it. You know, I want a throwback to the classic gameplay that made Call of Duty the big dynamo that it is. And the bottom line is it was Modern Warfare 1 and 2. Even though they had broken stuff in them, those games had enough variety in the gameplay, map design. They, they had good things to them. It wasn't about all these gimmicks in these modern games. And the thing is, they really have watered and watered and watered down FPS gameplay these days for kids. Which is silly because kids shouldn't be fucking playing these games anyway, but they are. And they made it Twitch Shooter. You know, oh, look flashy. The, the, the neon skins with fucking digital, you know, hot pink camo that dances across the screen as you summon 14 drones and put down magic walls. And do all this stupid shit that has nothing to fucking do with legitimate Call of Duty gameplay whatsoever. It's just become so bloated with shit. <clears throat> if they went back, if they went back to classic Smash Mouth style Call of Duty from Modern Warfare 1 days, and they called it Modern Warfare 1, I would stand and applaud and say, thank God, finally... We've got back what we were looking for because they've lost their way. They really have. <clears throat> um, but we'll see. You know, you would think if they're going to call it just modern warfare, right, that that's kind of what they're doing. They're hearkening back to an era when it was a much more simpler thing without all this overbloated nonsense. But I could be wrong. We won't know until it actually, uh, you know, we get more information around E3-ish. Okay? Okay. Fox tips me a dollar and says, what's the situation with the subscription chargebacks? I've already explained it, Fox. Sorry, I'm not going to go into it for the third time. Um, we made some adjustments on the stream. Therefore, anyone who tries to spam fake subs is not going to get any credit whatsoever on the stream at all. Those who already are existing subs and resub will. And those who are legitimate first-time subs will as well. I made the adjustments, so everything is good. No worries. Okay. <clears throat> James the Beastie. Did a 50 bit cheers is what if you feel what if they feel you didn't give them good content? Is that legitimate? No, not at all. That's stupid as shit. That's like saying you subscribe to a magazine and you get a couple issues of the magazine and you don't now you don't like it. Well, you already paid for it and you got the content, you know, you're done. The, you, know, you made that choice. You made that upfront choice to subscribe. Now, if you watch someone for two months and say, I don't like this guy, and you leave and you never subscribe, right? That's what you should have done. Why did you subscribe up front without knowing the kind of content that person puts out? That's stupidity. It, what it's called, <clears throat> it's called buyer's remorse, and it's something that's very, very true in the modern era, is that people pull the trigger way too early. They jump on a video game and pay $60 for a game because of height before they've ever even legitimately played it, then they have buyer's remorse that they bought the game because it's not very good. <clears throat> so, 
So, if you rush into a situation, you pay for something up front, it's your own fault. You know what I mean? Now, someone just made a ridiculously bad comparison and said, well, what about if you go to a restaurant and you don't like the meal? That's different. In a restaurant, you're provided the meal first, you eat the meal, and if you like the meal, then you pay for it. It's not, oh, you paid for it up front. That would be like saying, you know, you went to McDonald's, you paid for the food, you got it, right? Now, your food's bad, well, you want replacement food. You're not going to get your money back. Although, I, I would assume... Maybe some McDonald's would, but most are just going to give you more replacement food. They're not going to just immediately give you a refund for all your food. Oh, I ate the whole bag of fucking food from McDonald's. I didn't like it. Give me my money back. They're not going to do that. And that's essentially what you're doing. You pay for a subscription. You got all the benefits of the subscription. You watched the content. Now you want your money back for it. That's not how it works. <clears throat> okay? <laughs> that's not how it works. Um, Internet aristocrat. To me, a dollar and eleven cents, and says, "Whatever happened to your political YouTube channel idea? I was hoping to see you red pill the world." Um, I don't know. I, you know, that was an idea that years ago. We're talking what was that? Early twenty sixteen was when I was really talking about doing that. Um, and what I wanted to do, I said, I would separate that completely from my other content. That if I were to do anything like that, it would be, have to be a separate channel. I would not, never want to mix my gameplay content with anything political at all. All right. Um, I'm going to be very honest with all of you. I think it actually was to my benefit that I never went forward with that for a couple reasons. Number one, we all know how divisive politics is. We know this. And the thing is, I'm not a left or right guy at all. I'm kind of middle of the road. And I'll lean one way or the other on various issues depending on my own beliefs and my own rationale. Okay? Um, <clears throat> so the bottom line is, if I made a channel about politics, okay, it would be sometimes leaning one way, sometimes leaning the other. And what would happen is, I don't think I would be supported by anyone. Because that's the problem with politics is there's so many people who are staunchly one way or the other without allowing themselves to have an open mind and see all perspectives and maybe take a walk in someone else's shoes. I'm totally left, and anything to the right, I completely disagree with. I'm totally conservative, and anything to the left, I completely disagree with. And that's not a good way to go through life, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. You could disagree, but my opinion is you got to have an open mind and, and, and kind of take in all, all suggestions and situations if you're going to be thinking politically. Um, so I honestly think that if I had made a political channel, most people would have hated it because I always would have been... Oh my God, at one point Phil said something that's more conservative. At one point Phil said something that's more liberal. And I hate those two stances, so I hate him. You know what I mean? Now, in addition to that, if you guys aren't aware, YouTube, in the last couple of years, cracked down big time on political channels. Channels that are leaning one way, sadly, have been kind of censored. And I get the feeling that I might have been, you know, at in some points, a victim of that. And imagine putting time and effort into... Um, a channel that's about politics and then getting shut down, getting channels flagged. Oh, you can't, you can't uh, monetize this video because of the content matter or this video's blocked because of the content matter. You know what I mean? Like, I, that would have really pissed me off. Especially because, like I told you guys, I am not one way or the other. I'm not. Maybe on a certain issue. And to be told just because I have a certain feeling on one issue that now my my opinion isn't valid enough to even monetize on YouTube, I would have lost my mind. I would have fucking went nuts. So I'm actually glad. I think I saved myself a lot of drama, a lot of stress by not going that way. Um, and also, let's just be honest here. Even though I would have made a different channel for it, I still feel there would have been people who watched it and said, well, just because Phil feels this way on this issue and I disagree, I can no longer watch any of Phil's content anywhere, on Twitch or on YouTube or anywhere. I can't watch it because I disagree with him on this political issue. Sadly, that's how people are when it comes to religion and politics. There's a lot of people who are just so stubborn that if someone disagrees with them, that's it. I can never like that person ever again. Oh, there's a movie director who's a political way I don't agree with. I could never watch another work of theirs ever again. You know what I mean? It's like, What? What the fuck does that have to do with their directing capabilities? Nothing. So there you go. 
Um, Ben Tatership cheered. He says, what kind of psycho makes multiple accounts to insult a guy's wife? Wives are off limits as far as I'm concerned. You don't attack someone's wife. I mean, yeah, I agree, especially in the case of Kat, where she has never had any significant interaction with with my viewership, where she's never insulted anyone on the internet. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it would be one thing if, okay, here's a figure who's going on being insulting and offensive. It's the complete opposite. And people still go out of their way to insult. So... Timbo Slice Cheers said, Battlefield franchise got worse than Call of Duty has since the good days. Battlefield 5 is trash, unfinished garbage. It keeps promising major changes that never come. I deleted it off my PC now, and Battle Royal mode sucks. Well, there you go. I'm glad I didn't play it. Uh, 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 oh, my God. That was a monster burp. I'm sorry, guys. I wasn't even expecting that. It came out of nowhere. That was disgusting. Frogs playing golf cheered, talking about my accident. Wow. Hilarious. We totally didn't figure that one out yet. All right. Thanks for the cheer. All right, everyone. So here's the deal. I have to use the restroom quickly. So what we're going to do is end the pre-stream. I'm going to take about five minute break to go use the restroom. And then we're going to jump into the Neo 2 Alpha Demo. I don't know how long it is. Earlier, someone was saying it was about two hours long. If it's only two hours long, all right, fair enough. After this, we'll switch over to Days Gone and do some more post-game in Days Gone for a little bit. <clears throat> But a lot of the times when people tell me things are a certain length, it's incorrect at least. So we'll see. I've got this entire stream is dedicated to this if we need the time. So I would be more than willing to, you know, take an entire four plus hour segment to do it if, we, if it can, you know, last that long. And we'll go from there. All right. If not, we'll switch to Days Gone. Fair enough. So I'd like to say thanks to everyone who's contributed. One final reminder, the best way you can help me out right now because of the stuff going on behind the scenes financially, which is really bad, is tipping me. Tipping me helps me to pay my bills right now. So please consider it. There's two ways to tip me. Below the stream, there's a tips jar button, or you could type exclamation point tip into the stream chat. Either way, it'll bring up the same information to go to my PayPal tips page. Please consider it. Thank you everyone so far who's contributed. And I'll be right back with Neo2. See you in a bit.